therapist, Kristen Jacobson. Hey everyone, I'm Kristen, the Anxiety Therapist, and in this week's video, I'm speaking to those of you who struggle with chronic dissatisfaction and stress. And I want to share some of the concepts from this book, The Gap and the Gain, by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy. I read it a while back and I just think it's very eye-opening and wanted to share some of those concepts with you. And I don't get any kickbacks, I'm not affiliated with the book at all. I just think it's a good book and I would encourage you to read it, but at least you'll get kind of a little synopsis here of the main ideas. So the gap in the gain pretty much contrasts two distinct mindsets, gap thinking and gain thinking. So gap thinking is all about the space between where you are now and where you aspire to be. So it's a forward looking approach that focuses on unmet goals and perceived deficiency. And so when we're constantly comparing ourselves from where we are now to where we want to be, it's sort of this ever evolving ideal that can really contribute to that chronic dissatisfaction and stress. And I work with a lot of clients who struggle with this. You know, they have an idea of a lofty goal or what they want to accomplish or where they want to be in life. And so they're constantly trying to get there and there's always a deficit, right? There's always a gap between where they are now and where they want to be. So gap thinking is really characterized by forward comparison. Like I mentioned, measuring yourself against your ideal future self. Therefore, it's just always out of reach by nature. External motivation. So when we're in gap thinking, we're really driven by external standards and societal expectations that, you know, those expectations of others. And there's a focus on deficiency. So highlighting what we lack and what we haven't achieved. I like to think about this as sort of there always being a finish line mentality, but that results in a moving target. So let's say somebody is really stressed and dissatisfied with how life is going right now. And they think that getting a promotion at work is what they need in order to be happy then they get that promotion they realize that it didn't really change much for them and so then it's on to the next goal and so we're constantly feeling like we're behind right like we can't quite get to that goal that that's going to change everything for us on the contrary gain thinking encourages you to look back and measure your progress from a past point and it's really about recognizing and appreciating your growth and achievements, which then fosters a sense of accomplishment and contentment. So gain thinking really emphasizes that backward comparison, looking at how far you've come from a previous point in time. And a lot of times with the high achievers, the perfectionists that I work with, those with high functioning anxiety, it's always future focused and they have a really hard time at sort of acknowledging their accomplishments and what they've achieved thus far, which is gain thinking. Gain thinking also emphasizes internal motivation. So we're driven by personal growth and self-defined success as opposed to those external or societal expectations. And there's a focus on progress. So like I said, celebrating those achievements and milestones, no matter how small, as opposed to focusing on what we're lacking or what we haven't achieved yet. So there's some science behind the principles of the gap and the gain. And one is hedonic adaptation. I made a video about this a while back and this phenomenon explains why our initial happiness from achieving goals quickly fades and we start chasing new goals. So we kind of adapt to that feeling of success or accomplishment. And when we're constantly striving for future achievements, which is gap thinking, we're never truly satisfied because that target keeps moving. So research suggests that this sort of perpetual pursuit can lead to a cycle of dissatisfaction and unhappiness. Another element that comes into play is self-determination theory. So this theory identifies three basic psychological needs that we need for well-being, and those are autonomy, competence, and relatedness. So gain thinking really supports these needs by allowing you to define your own success and measure progress based on personal growth 
which relates to autonomy. Gain thinking recognizes and appreciates your achievements, which boosts your sense of self-efficacy, which relates to competence, your ability to reach your goals. And then it fosters optimism and positive emotions, which really can enhance social connections and support. And this relates to relatedness. So understanding all of this is one thing, but how do we actually apply it to daily life, right? How do we create habits that allow this transformation to happen? Here are some practical strategies from the book that can kind of help you go from gap thinking to gain thinking. One is journaling. So this practice helps you reflect on your achievements and maintain a record of your progress. So you wanna do this daily where you write down maybe three things that you feel like you've accomplished that day, even small things, taking a walk, completing a task at work, spending quality time with family, just acknowledging these small wins so that you're sort of rewiring your brain toward that more positive mindset. You also wanna look at long-term reflection. So periodically you can reflect on longer spans of time, six months, one year, five years, et cetera, and document those significant gains and milestones during these periods. So this practice really provides you of an overall picture of your growth over time. You can also develop a gratitude practice. So regular gratitude exercises really improve well-being and research in positive psychology has shown that gratitude practices like keeping a gratitude journal can enhance job performance, improve sleep, and increase overall life satisfaction. So again, this is something you ideally want to do daily where maybe each night before you go to bed you write down three things that you're grateful for and this simple act that takes just you know three minutes at most really shifts your focus to the positives in your life reinforcing that sense of accomplishment and contentment you can also do mental subtraction so this exercise involves imagining your life without certain positive aspects which helps to enhance your appreciation for them so if you visualize the absence of something or someone important it really helps to cultivate a deeper sense of gratitude and appreciation for that thing so An example might be, think about a particular friend who's really supportive. Imagine how different your life would be without them. And this exercise can really help you appreciate their presence even more. We also want to make sure we're balancing optimism and realism. So I know there are a lot of skeptics out there about positive thinking and does that really work, you know? And I I totally understand that. I think until we start engaging in it, we don't really see how it can be that impactful. While game thinking is more beneficial, it is important to balance optimism with realism because extreme optimism can sometimes lead to unrealistic expectations and poor decision-making, while extreme pessimism can cause anxiety and depression. So we want to aim for a realistic yet positive outlook. One way I try to incorporate these principles into my daily life is by trying to foster this mindset within my kids. I have a son who's almost four, my daughter is six and a half, so everything is a negotiation. I say they can have something and then they're always trying to negotiate for more. So one thing that I do is, let me give you an example. So the other night I was laying with my son at bedtime and I said, okay, I'm gonna lay with you for two more minutes. And he immediately came back with, how about five more minutes? And so I'll do that comparison like, what's better, zero or two minutes? So he can kind of see what he's gaining and just be grateful for what he has instead of constantly sort of looking for more or looking for for the next thing. So I hope this was helpful. I would love to learn how you guys maybe use some of these principles in your life if you're already using them or if this is a new concept for you, which I think it probably is for most people. How do you think you could incorporate gain thinking over gap thinking? So please leave a comment, ask a question, and I'll talk to you next week.